Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the ruler trick for flattening the back of a plane blade. Hope you enjoy. If you saw the video where I set up the Stanley Bay hand plane, I mentioned that I used the ruler trick in that. So what I wanted to do today is explain what the ruler trick is, how it actually works and what it's doing, and when I recommend that you would use it. So let's bring you in here and we'll get started. So to do this, you're going to need a small ruler like this one here. This ruler is about oh, half a millimeter thick. Uh, you, you don't want your ruler to be too thick. Uh, about half a millimeter is about correct. And I don't think you're going to find too many that are any thinner than that. Just watch that you don't get ones that are much thicker than that because it's not going to work as well for, for this particular trick. So what you want to do is wet your stone down and set the ruler on your side here or if you're left handed on this side depending on how you flatten the back of your blade. Now you want to wet the stone, that'll actually help to hold this ruler in place while you're moving back and forwards. Now I might add, you probably want a ruler that you're not going to be using much because the indentations and things like that, it does get rubbed off by moving your plane blade back and forwards. Then what we do is we come in and we reach the blade right across. Now the wider your stone, the less pronounced the angle is going to be on the back just here. So most stones are about this this width here which is about 60 or 70 millimeters. All you need to know is that a wider stone is going to have a result in a lesser angle on the back bevel here. So you want to reach that right across and keep this edge as far over this side as possible. And you want to keep this ruler on this side. Then you simply move back and forwards like this keeping that as close to this edge as possible to try and maintain the same angle. And what that results in is what we call a back bevel on the back of the blade here. Now normally this is done on quite a fine stone, but you can work on more aggressive stones and then go finer uh, as I've done sometimes. Why, why would you want to do that, that back bevel? These thin blades like you get on the Stanley Bailey. They can get a little twist in them because they're quite thin blades as we know and the chip break is there to stiffen the blade up and whatnot. But you don't necessarily have that happen with the much thicker blades like either this one or the, the more modern blades that are much thicker. They don't tend to get twists in them and they do tend to be better machined. These ones are just punched out of the steel so they do sometimes unfortunately come even brand new with twists in them. Uh, the other thing you can have is sometimes they have a little belly in them and that could take ages to flatten just like the um, the twists in them. Now, I personally try to flatten the back of a blade all the way across because I find it actually works better and it's easier for mating the chip breaker against the back of the blade. But when you do have situations where you've got twists like that, it's going to take you ages and you're going to remove too much steel from the back of the blade to actually get a nice flat surface to make the chip breaker. That's when the ruler trick comes in. And the reason that that comes in there nicely is that with that elevation on one side, it actually drops the front down closer, which means you're only sharpening right on the very edge of the blade. As we know, it's that first five millimeters where the chip breaker is mating and, and even less if you're getting very fine you've got it maybe 1 to 1.5 millimeters away from the edge of that blade. So when it comes down to it that's the only place that it really needs to be flat allowing a nice flat surface for the chip breaker to mate with that blade. So that's why with that ruler trick we can elevate it and we can maybe get past where the twists are. So if we're elevating and you, the twist is further back in your, your blade you might not notice that as much. So we can actually come in here and just flatten that very small edge. Now I'll give you a close up of this blade and you can see where flattening was done originally and then where the back bevel is actually showing. All right, so if we look at the back of this blade here, we can see this area here was where I originally tried to flatten it. And you can see this little mark just here this area was a little bit twisted and it wouldn't flatten about that much area of the blade. So what I did is I did the ruler trick and we can see this line that runs through here 
and then that is showing this slightly different angle here. And we can see now that it's shiny right along this edge, right up to the cutting edge. So now this area here is perfect for the chip breaker to now mate to that blade. So that's what we initially, what we really call as a back bevel because it's an additional bevel that's coming back towards the cutting bevel, but it's so minuscule here that it's not really considered a back bevel and a lot of people are just calling it the ruler trick. But you can see the benefit of doing this if you've got a blade that's causing you problems. Just want to show you one more. So I also have this blade here where I've tried to flatten it here and you can see there's a big area down in the bottom here that's not flattened, here that's not flattened, and only here has it come right up to the cutting edge, which means that we've got a lot of flattening to get this done. So what I want to do is try and get the ruler trick on here and we'll see uh, how we can get that probably sharpened right along that edge fairly quickly. So jumping back to the stone, we've got our ruler here, got our stone wet, this is a 1200 grit diamond stone. You can use more aggressive uh, stones depending on how out the blade is, but quite often this is done on quite a fine stone uh, so you don't go too crazy on the back bevel. We bring it down like this. Pressure on this edge here, guiding it on this side here by the ruler. And we'll go back and forwards a few times and see the results we get. After just a few minutes of that, we can see that this part here on the cutting edge was only coming to here before, now it's coming down to here. So fairly quickly, we're going to be able to get this nice and sharpened along the back of this blade. Now, if you want to speed this process up with really bad blades, it can take a little while, and that's why you can go up to the higher grits if you want to. But I recommend when you first try it, just start on the finer grits because you don't want to make a back bevel that's too big and then have to take the entire bevel off to correct the issue. After about five minutes, you can see that we've got a lot of traction coming right on the edge of this blade here, but I still haven't come right down to here and not quite to this corner here. Now, this is quite an extreme case on a blade and it's uh, going to take some time, even with the back bevel, to actually correct this blade because it's quite out. Now, the reason I think is with these older blades, when they ran through the entire cutting edge, they attached a new piece of cutting steel down here. And there is a line along here that I just marked on here where this piece has been reattached. And that is why the angle is out on this. But I have found that some of these older planes, uh, because the blades are much thicker, and the chip breakers are a little more forgiving. So you don't need to be as accurate with these. But in any case, this, I would probably have to take onto the, the heavy stone to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, just work right across until I get right to these edges here. But I'm not going to continue now because I just wanted to do this to show you, even in the extreme cases, that the ruler trick actually works quite well. And we can see, even here, in that amount of time, we've come back to about there, which, if I put my ruler on here, is around about five millimeters back. So to sharpen right to this edge here and right to this edge here, this is gonna end up being quite a big back bevel. Now that doesn't necessarily matter as long as you make the chip breaker with this flat piece here and it still works. So now I hope you have a better understanding on how that ruler trick works and the situations in which I would use it. Now, as I've shown you, I reserve it for the worst of blades because I believe that flattening the blade right through completely flat is just quicker and easier. Now I know there are some people out there and they like to use the ruler trick every time they sharpen. So if you feel that speeds up your, your sharpening process and you want to use it all the time, go for it. Uh, th there's no problem with doing that. I just personally don't like to do that. And one last thing that you have to bear in mind when you're using the ruler trick, if you're not doing it on all of your blades, you have to be prepared to remember which blades you have actually used the ruler trick on because every time you sharpen that blade and you remove that burr, you want to use that ruler trick again. Otherwise, your angles are going to change and it's going to be more difficult to remove that burr. So if you like this video and you'd like to see another video on how to 
flatten the back of the blade, prepare the chip breaker, and then fit the two together and make sure there's no gap between them. Please check out this video down here where I cover just that topic. And I just want to put a big thank you out there to my patrons on Patreon. I very much appreciate your support. And one last thing, if any of you out there would like to help to support me to keep making these great videos for you, please consider pledging on Patreon. Links in the description below. Bye for now.